Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, and as you can see, um, I'm back in my apartment at school. But yes, okay, uh, today's video, I've set all of this up very quickly because I got an email this morning from 23andMe, which, okay, I need to start over. <laughs> If you saw my what I got for Christmas video, you saw that I got 23andMe for Christmas, which I was super excited about. Basically, if you don't know, it's this service, and I'm not being sponsored about any of this, <laughs> but it's a service where uh, basically you give them your DNA. It's a little bit weird, but I don't know. It's kind of cool too. You spit into a tube, you give it to them, they extract your DNA, and they can find out a lot about your health and your ancestry. So I have done that, and my results are back, and I'm actually like really nervous. I'm kind of freaking out. So for some reason, I decided I should film this. I don't know, maybe something interesting will happen. I also might never put this video up if it's too personal or whatever, but I can just edit out things if I need to. I don't know. Okay, <sighs> can you tell I'm nervous? I think it can tell you things like if you're susceptible to Alzheimer's disease and stuff like that. So <sighs> I haven't looked at this yet. I just opened it up. I'm gonna look at ancestry first and then move on to health. I don't know. Okay, so my guess about ancestry is that I think I'm French Swiss on my dad's side, and I'm not totally sure about my mom's side. Whoa! It says I share DNA and ancestors with 1,034 other 23andMe customers, so I can go and find my matches and stuff. 100% of your relatives have British and Irish ancestry. I'm 99.3% European. 54.7% British and Irish. I had no idea. Is that what my mom's side is? Okay, and the next I'm 21.1% French and German and Swiss. Okay, so that's what I had thought, but I didn't know that I was more than 50% British and Irish. That's really cool. And then other parts, 4.3% Scandinavian. And then partially, very minorly, Spanish and Portuguese. 0.3% Native American, 0.2% South Asian, 0.2% Sub-Saharan African. Okay, so I'm very much, again, it says 99.3% European, and most of that is British and Irish, and some French and German and Swiss. Wow, that is really cool. Okay, I'm gonna have to, like, go through this some more at some point. Ooh, Ancestry Timeline. Wait, dude, this is so cool. It has, like, literally the chromosomes in which part Oh my gosh. It tells me like which part of my chromosomes are European and which parts have the like East Asian. Whoa. Okay, there's a lot that I can look at here, but I wanna do that later. Uh, for now, I'm gonna go look at the health. Okay, you guys, this is like the most nerve wracking part. What does it say about my health predispositions? Ooh, I can look at traits. Okay, I'm gonna do that first because the other ones I have to like complete tutorials to view. Oh, here's wellness reports, view eight reports. It says that I am unlikely to have the alcohol flush reaction. I don't know because I've never had alcohol. <laughs> I'm likely to consume less caffeine. That's true. I like only drink water. Less likely to be a deep sleeper. That is true. I'm a very light sleeper. Genetic weight predisposed to weigh more than average. <laughs> Okay, I'm actually glad that it said this because I have weighed more than average my entire life. So this is just kind of proven like, yeah, that's just how it is. Even like, so I have a twin brother and when we were babies, uh, one of the easiest ways to tell us apart was that I was like the big chunky one and he was the skinnier one. And that's also just how it's been our entire lives. And maybe that's why it's hard for me to lose weight and be like a normal weight. I'm just predisposed to weigh more. And so if that's what's healthy for my body and where it wants to be, then okay. Muscle composition is common in elite power athletes. I don't think I have a very good muscle composition. I have like the worst upper body strength ever. I likely move more um, in my sleep than the average person. I think that's true as well. I also sometimes talk in my sleep. Let's see, so that was wellness. Oh, there's traits. Okay, you guys, this is so interesting. How long is this video gonna be? I'm just sitting here looking at everything. I'm more likely to be able to match a musical pitch. Well, that's nice. I can likely taste bitter stuff. I don't have dimples. Detached earlobes. Do I have detached earlobes? I think so. Likely brown or hazel eyes. That's right. 
More likely than average to be afraid of heights. Interesting. It's kind of true. My hair is likely straight or wavy. That's true. It's mostly straight, a little bit wavy. Likely light hair. I'm likely bitten by mosquitoes more often than others. Oh my gosh. Uh, I went to Minnesota once. Well, I've been there a few times. But once I went there and we spent a week in the cabin and I got like 63 mosquito bites. And I'm always like, why do they like me? It's my genetics, I guess. Oh my gosh, that's so interesting. At least a little unibrow. Do I have a little unibrow? Actually, I kind of do and I have to like pluck it. Wake up time. Likely to wake up around 8.44 a.m. That is such an exact time and that's also not true. I usually wake up around, I would say like 6.45. Like that's when I naturally wake up, believe it or not. People with your genetics in their 20s wake up on average around 8 to 44 a.m. on their days off. No, I've never woken up that way. I can't remember a time when I ever woke up that late. I know that's early for some people, but that's late for me. Now am I gonna get into the other stuff? It says I need to complete a tutorial to see health predispositions and carrier status. Okay, start tutorial. I'm gonna take this real quick. It teaches you a lot about genetics and stuff. This is actually pretty interesting. Okay, let's see. Age-related macular degeneration. Variant detected, not likely at increased risk. Late onset Alzheimer's disease, slightly increased risk. Okay. I have one copy of the something variant that they tested. People with this variant have a slightly increased risk of developing light, late onset Alzheimer's disease. Lifestyle, environment, and other factors can also affect your risk. No variants detected for celiac disease or a G6PD deficiency or Parkinson's. Okay, and then let me, there's 44 reports of a carrier status. So basically, I could be carrying some kind of something. This is good to know because I want to have children at some point in my life. This isn't going to affect whether or not I have children, but it would be interesting to know. So but actually, this is good. I don't have variants detected for any of these. And it tests things like Tay-Sachs, sickle cell anemia, uh, Bloom syndrome, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, cystic fibrosis, lots of stuff and I have no variants detected. Okay. <sighs> was that everything? I don't know. I don't know what I did. Okay, you guys, oh, that was intense. <laughs> well, I think um, overall it was pretty accurate, uh, but I also need to take everything with a grain of salt and it's also not diagnosing everything. I'm glad to know that I don't have a lot of variants for things, like Parkinson's or a lot of carrier statuses for things, but um, I do have one variant detected, but not likely an increased risk for the age-related macular degeneration. And then I'm also at a slightly increased risk for late onset Alzheimer's disease. And I was very interested to find out that I'm mostly British and Irish. Okay, that was a lot to take in, but that was very interesting. And I'm probably going to sp still spend the next like 20 minutes on this site reading through everything because they give you a lot of information and this is all super interesting. Am I even gonna post this? I don't know. I'm like all over the place in this video. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, subscribe if you wanna stick around and I'll see you next time. Bye.